Now I want to introduce the notion of finite groups. So up until now, we've looked at infinite groups. These are groups such as the set of real numbers under addition, or the set of complex numbers under addition, or the set of positive real numbers under multiplication, or the set of rational numbers under addition, or the set of integers under addition. These are all infinite groups. And let's now look at addition mod 3. So if uh, we want to consider addition mod 3, we need to know what the set is and what the operation is. So the set we're talking about, that's z3, which consists of the integers 0, 1, and 2. And we're talking about addition mod 3. So for instance, um, 1 plus 2, instead of being 3, would be 0. And we want to ask, is this a group? So in order to be a group, we need to check the four group properties. Is it closed? Is it associative? Is there an identity element? And does every element have an inverse? Well, in order to figure this out, it might help to sort of play around with this group and understand it a little bit. So we know that if you look at 0 plus 0, that ended up being 0. And if you look at 0 plus 1, that ended up being 1. And we could go through and write all of these possibilities down. 0 plus 2, what does that end up being? That ends up being 2. But there's a better way to do this. And that would be to organize it in a table. So here's a table that shows 0, 1, and 2 on the left-hand side and 0, 1, and 2 along the top. And then in the body of the table, we have all the different possibilities. And this is called a group table. And the way you read a group table is you look at an element on the left-hand side. So for instance, this 1 right here. And then we could say 1. And then we could look at an element on top, say the 2 over here, plus 2 equals, and then we look at that entry on the table. So here's the 1, here's the 2. The entry would be that 0 right there. So 1 plus 2 is 0. And you can see how this works for every other uh, element in the table. So now we can ask, is this closed? Well, closure means that you take any two elements in the set, you perform the binary operation on them, and you get something back in the set. And we can see that everything in the table here is either a 0, a 1, or a 2. So this is closed. So we can say yes to that. Is it associative? So in order to be associative, we need to be able to move the parentheses around. And if you think about this, uh, we're doing addition mod 3. Well, we know that regular addition is associative. Is addition mod 3 associative? And it turns out that it is. It's a little bit harder to check. You could go through and look at all the different possibilities here. But if you just think about it, it kind of makes sense. We're, we're talking about um, something that is very close to what you know to be regular addition. So could say that, yes, this is associative. To really prove that it's associative, you could go through and look at all of the different possibilities and see if you're able to move the parentheses around. I'll do one example here. Suppose I want to see if 0 plus 2 plus 1 is the same thing as... Is that the same thing as 0 plus 2 plus 1? Okay, so this is 0 plus, what's 2 plus 1? Well, here's the 2, here's the 1, that's 0, okay? What's 0 plus 2? Here's the 0, here's the 2, that's 2, so that's 2 plus 1. 0 plus 0, that's 0. 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, that's also 0. So in this particular case, it works, and you could go through and check all the other possibilities. Is there an identity element? So remember, the identity element is the thing that when you perform the binary operation on it, you get back the same thing. So in this case, if we look at the table, we can see that this column is the same thing as the left-hand side, and this row is the same thing as the top, and that tells us that 0 must be our identity. Why is that? Well, if you perform the binary operation with 0, you get back whatever you started with. In other words, 1 plus 0 gives you back 1. 2 plus 0 gives you back 2. And it doesn't matter what order you do it in. 0 plus 1 gives you back 1, and 0 plus 2 gives you back 2. 
So we see that yes, there is an identity element, and in fact, we can say that the identity in this case is zero. So a good way to find the identity in a group table is to look for the row and the column that are repeating the left-hand side of the table and the top of the table. Okay, inverses. Does every element have an inverse? So the inverse is the thing that gives you back the identity. Okay, well, zero inverse. Remember, we can write a little negative one to represent inverse. That's just zero, because zero gives you back zero, and zero is the identity. How about one? What's the inverse of one? What plus one gives you back the identity? And that would be two. One plus two gives you back the identity, and two plus one gives you back the identity. How about two? What's the inverse of two? The inverse of two is one. Two plus one gives you back the identity, zero. And one plus two gives you back the identity. So every element has an inverse. And so since we have all four properties, we can say this is a group. And in fact, it is a group that is finite. There's only three elements here, as opposed to all these groups up here, which are infinite because there are an infinite number of elements in the set. So how do we define the order of a group? Well, the order of a group, and we're going to denote that by these little uh, bars around the group G, is the number of elements in the group. And this is related to our discussion of finite and infinite groups. So for example, we have the group of addition uh, mod three for the integers, and we saw that the order of that was three. There were three elements in the group. Here's the group table, you can see that. And how about addition mod four? Well, if you think about that, here's the group table. That makes sense that it would have an order of four. There's four elements in the set, zero, one, two, and three. And in fact, in general, z sub n, where n is uh, any uh, integer uh, one or larger, will just have an order of n. So we see that uh, for these things, these are finite groups. What about an infinite group? Well, g is the group consisting of the real numbers under addition. That was this thing here with uh, r and then addition. Then the order of that group is infinite. There's an infinite number of elements in the set of real numbers. And if the order of a group is finite, then we can just refer to that group as a finite group.